So today we get a Onkyo receiver on the bench, and it is a Onkyo ABR. No, I'm sorry, AV receiver, model number TX-SR502. So I get this focus here. There we go. And the problem with this receiver is uh, the next door neighbor. Um, asked me to come over and check it out. Uh, it was wouldn't come out of standby. Uh, the protection circuit hasn't been, been engaged, and um, I suspected a shorted output. So what I did was, is I took uh, the cover off, tested a few components, and determined that there was a shorted channel. So what I ended up doing just to get the receiver up and running until the uh, the parts came in was I clipped the bad transistor out of circuit and I was able to revive the receiver out of standby and uh, he used it for a little while until the parts come in and uh, here it is so the parts are here and I'm gonna try and uh, get the uh, the old ones out so what you wanna look for here I'm gonna get my multimeter I'm gonna put it on on ohms and if I can do this, it's not easy with one holding the camera. But you're going to check for, usually when these transistors short, um, there's usually a pair per channel. And what happened is these two transistors right here, um, they shorted out. Either one by, uh, you know, shorted speaker terminal or uh, this noble resistor uh, shorted out or opened up. Um, actually, it didn't probably won't show it. It'll probably open. So what I did was I first checked the noble resistor. It should be relatively uh, low. It'll almost look like a short because it's like a 0.1 or 0.01, something like that. So or two ohm. Uh, let's see. Yeah, point. No, it's point point two two ohm. That's what it says on the side there. So if I can try and get my meter on there. What's going on? You'll see that it's uh, floating around. It's 20k something. Uh, that's definitely opened up. If you come over here to the other side, there we go, one ohm. So, uh, yeah, she's no good. She's opened up, and what happens when that opens up is uh, usually these the transistors that are hooked into the emitters um, usually short out, and uh, that's and then it throws the receiver into standby, and you won't be able to get out of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull this resistor out and pull these two transistors and make sure everything else is okay in the circuit and put new parts in and we'll uh, see what happens. Alright, so for replacement parts, uh, we got a, uh, a noble-like resistor. It is basically two resistors in one. Let's bring it a clarity shot here. Um, 5 watt point two two ohms. Um, now because of the uh, resistance length in my uh, meter, we're gonna get we're gonna get a discrepancy of 0.9 ohms to one ohm. So we're gonna check the new part. And with the way these are hooked up is there's one resistor from the center pin to the left pin and one resistor from the center pin to the right pin and each one is, should be um, 0.22 ohms if you have your meter lead zeroed out and if your meter lead uh, if you can't zero your meter leads out uh, you can subtract the value from when you short the leads together like we had there 0.91 ohm so we're going to try and hook this up like this So we got 1.1 1 .1 ohm. All right, so yeah, good. 
on the other side? 1.1. Okay. Good. So minus 1 ohm would be 0 0.1, 0 0.2. So, okay, this is a good new resistor. And same thing when you're checking the, the bad one. you got to apply the same uh, zeroing technique on your needle leads. So, and for the um, audio power amps, we have uh, cross-referenced a B817, which cross-references to an NT37. And that's that part there, NT37. And the other one was a D1047, which cross-references to a NT36. So, if you can't get original parts, NTE will work just fine. Because uh, so if that's all you can get, that's all you can get. So we're gonna try and get these parts in there and see what happens. I'm going to check some of the pre-driver circuit to make sure there's no shorts or any open circuits and anything. And uh, before I go firing this thing off, and we're gonna make sure that the um, we're gonna put new compound in on behind these uh, transistors also and we're going to see what kind of insulation is behind there if there's uh, some micro insulators like there are in new packaging you'll notice that there's a little glass looking piece uh, very fragile you don't want to bend this stuff it will crack and fracture um, so we'll see if uh, what we can do if the, if the old ones look good we might just uh, put those back in so We'll see what happens. First, I'm going to try and determine how I'm going to get this board out because there's no access panel on the bottom of this receiver. So it looks like a lot of stuff has to come apart to get access to the solder side of this uh, bottom lower board where all the um, transistors are uh, soldered to. So we'll come back when we uh, will determine how we're going to do that. It may already be all set to go and we will start uh, soldering. All right, so what we're gonna try and do is we're gonna try and uh, we're gonna pull up the uh, the old transistor leads, which are I've already marked them on the heat sink. Which ones they are? Uh, the set of three, this set of three, and we're gonna pull the noble out, uh, which is these three um, points right here. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use my desoldering gun, <coughs> and we'll uh, start taking them up. Sometimes you need a little solder to get it started because sometimes there's no flux. Now you can use the soldering braid, solder suckers, whatever you want. I just like showing off my new toy. Alright. So, sometimes the leads there will get a little stuck. I need my other tool. And we'll just use this. get it later. And that one fell behind, but we'll get it. And now we'll take the, uh, get rid of these pieces. 
pieces. Now I'll take up the noble. That's that. That's the old one. So now we'll put in the uh, the new oval. You have to bend the leads a little bit so they don't fall out on you when you hit them with the solder. It's always fun. Right. So that piece is in. So now what's left to do is take out the old transistors on the, from the heat, off the heat sink because I already cut the leads. Um, so we'll put new transistors on. We'll fold the new leads over and solder them uh, down to where they belong. All right. So now we're going to take out the two transistors that were clipped originally. Very carefully pop them off the uh, heat sink there because there's going to be a mica pad behind it. Sometimes you can just slide them up, they'll come right off. That one's no good. We're going to check those. I'm sure they're dead. Come down and check those transistors to make sure. I'm pretty sure they're dead. I'm gonna put these things on. Dead short, dead short, dead short, dead short. So you know where these are going. Just want to take a look here, see if the uh, yeah, it's not too bad. I think we'll stick with what was on now. So Put the new parts. What did I do with them? That little man. Four seven. I'm gonna put the NT thirty six on the left. This one. Brand new part. What we're going to do is we're going to put some new goo on there, some heat compound. I don't want to do it go too crazy, just a thin layer. Do a little rubbing with your finger. That's all you need.
Torque it down tight, but don't uh, don't go crazy trying to get this thing super super tight. Just enough to snug it up. Same thing to the other one. Try to get the transistors as straight as possible too. That'll help you when you solder the pins on the back side. Alright, so we got the two new transistors in right there or there. Now we're gonna flip the board over and we're gonna solder those bad Larry's in. Just make sure. Flip it over. What fun this is. Flip it. And now you see the legs sticking up in the bottom. What I do here is I'll fold them over. See if I can get a uh, better tool for that. Oh, where's my trust? Trusty regular screwdriver. Okay. Now we'll just take a regular solder, regular solder and iron, tie those pots down. That's in there nice. So now we'll just clean the flux up again. A little alcohol on a toothbrush.
Very good. Actually, looks cleaner than the, the manufacturer solder. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm also going to check the biasing pot. Make sure it's uh, um, close to the others or not damaged, because that uh, could sometimes be a problem too. So uh, this the bias pot is right here. I'm going to make sure it's. So that looks like it's a 1K. Yep, 1K. Yep, 286. Close enough. So we're going to see what the, uh, the old mobile looked like here. circuit that's one side and from the middle to the end on this side it's open open circuit so that's what caused the failure probably either the number one the, the uh, like I said before the transistor had shorted or the resistor had opened up, one of the two. Okay, so now it's just pretty much reassembly and I'm not going to bore you with that, so um, we'll come back when it's all back together. Alright, we get everything uh, fastened back down and the transistors are in, the new Noble resistor is in, and uh, we've got it plugged in, we're going to turn it on and hopefully uh, it comes out of uh, standby. And, uh, it lets it turn on. Okay, so it does. So I think this is a win. So we'll. Uh, I'm gonna check this out before I give it back to a room and uh, and make sure everything's working. But uh, yeah, everything went well, and it was uh, relatively not too bad, other than taking this thing apart, which was kind of a bear, but it wasn't too bad. So that's how you can fix uh, a dead channel on your uh, home receiver. Uh, hopefully this helps uh, simplify things and uh, get you up and running. Good luck.